is, it is time to go to work. Look at somebody that says, time to get to work. Yeah, it's time to go to work, 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 work. This is going to be an exciting year. We follow what God is saying to us. It's time to get to work. And those key words, time, work, and money. Time, work, and money. I want you to focus on those words, how we have embraced those words, how we've looked at those words. We want to see those words the way God sees them. It's time to get to work. Work. Now, we're going to talk about this. I'm just going to talk about it a minute. And then on Wednesday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, we're going to be laying a foundation. And I'm going to show you why that it's not something that can be done in one day, two days, three days. I'm going to show you why it's necessary that we take the whole month of January to lay a foundation of what we want to accomplish this year. You should go ahead and get your list out on what you're not going to do this year. Make your list out what I'm not doing this year. Make your list out conversations I'm not going to have this year. There are some things we're not going to engage in. Need a conversation. So get ready for this year. Do not, that's what I heard the Lord say, do not approach this year like you have approached years in the past. He said 10 years, the last 10 years. I don't know what's significant about 10, but I'm sure he will reveal that as we go. So the theme for 2023 is not the subject today, but the theme is time to go to work. Look at Genesis chapter 2, first three verses. I just want to speak on the theme for just a few minutes. Because when we talk about it's time to get to work, sometimes we can get lost in that. Sometimes we think we, we, we think only in the physical realm, but I'm talking about the most important, the most powerful work that has ever been done on the planet. In Genesis chapter 2, verse, first three verses, hear the word of God, listen to the word of God. Thus the heavens and the earth and all the host of them were finished, finished. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had done. He rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day, sanctified it, because in it he rested from all his work, which God had created and made. What I want you to focus on here when we talk about it's time to get to work, the, the most productive work that has ever been done in the universe, not just on this planet, the greatest work that's ever been done was done by God in six days. Six days he worked. The seventh day, the Bible says he's rest, he rested. The question is this, what kind of work did he do? I'm not, not going to develop this. I just want you to think as we move into this. What kind of work did he do? He spoke. He spoke. And he called it work. In your Bible, in my Bible, he called it work. He spoke. Say Communication. That's why communication is such hard work. It's hard work. Not so much hard when we think of work. Many times we think of it just physically. That's the easiest form of work. Physical work. Solomon says that mental work not only exhausted you emotionally, but it exhausts you physically too. The wise man says that. And then we have spiritual work. Six days he worked. 
talking. If you, if you, you, you should get started in Genesis and you look at chapter one, two, and three, you're going to see how he worked, spoke, commanded, and that's what he's saying to us. It's time to get to work. It's time to get to work. Think about that. That's why, and I'm, that's why the devil gets, he, he, he really messes with our communication because his work. Talking to some, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to stop in a minute because I'm, I'm, I'm not, this ain't what I'm talking about this morning. Talking to somebody, some people, is like a 50-hour work week physically. It's hard work. When you get through the negativity and all the, all the reverses and turns and seem like you've been in a fight, he's going to talk to us. He's going to help us this year. It's hard work. It's hard work. Hard work. Talking, communicating. But God says it's time to get to work. Jesus said, what my daddy did, I do. Forty years old, we're going to be saying what, 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 what God did, we're going to do. Going to speak. I promise you, you're going to get more accomplished speaking and confessing than we could ever do with our hands. It's time to get to work. I want to talk about today in the book of Exodus, starting at, verse, starting at chapter 12, first 12 verses. I want you to look at this, and studying this and looking at it and I woke up this morning and, and the Lord said something that kind of blew me away as I was getting out to bed and I shared it with you. In Exodus chapter 12, first 12 verses, look at it. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, this month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak unto the, unto the congregation of Israel, saying in the tenth day of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. Every man, according to the eating, shall make your account for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. Ye shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats, and ye shall keep it until the 14th day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And they shall take of the blood, strike it on the two doorposts and on the upper doorposts of the house where they shall eat it. And they shall eat the flesh in the night, roasted with fire, unleavened bread with bitter herbs, they shall eat it. Eat not of it raw, nor boiled at all with water, but roast with fire, his head with his legs and his putinants thereof. And ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning. That which remain of it until the morning ye shall burn with fire. And thus shall ye eat it with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, your staff in your hand. And ye shall eat it in haste. Mm. It is the Lord's Passover. If I will pass through the land of Egypt, this night will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment 
I am the Lord. I want to talk about today how to start a year. I want us to get that in our spirits, how to start a year. He has given us a pattern. It's not that we should go out and kill lambs, but he's given us a pattern. When the disciples asked Jesus how to pray, he said, after this manner. He didn't say do it word for word, but what he's saying is this is a pattern. I'm going to give you a pattern on how to pray. He has given us a pattern on how to start a year. Pattern. When you look at it, God does something in, in Exodus chapter 1 when he says to them, from now on, he changed the calendar. From now on, this is going to be the beginning of the year. Doesn't matter when the year starts. We just know that 365 days has passed. So this is how you start the year. Gave him a pattern. I want you to start the year off with sacrifice. First thing I want you to do, I want you to get ready to give me the best you got. Whew. <laughs> It's a pattern. It's a pattern. I want you to start giving me the best you got. And the reason why you should do it is because we're going to celebrate Passover. This Wednesday and Tuesday, we'll be having communion as we start the year off right. God says, I, I gave you the very best that heaven had. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So I want you to start it off understanding what I have done for you. How I have emptied myself, came into the world as a man, died on an old rugged cross. I want you to start the year off thinking this is what God did for me. As I was looking at that word beginning, I heard the spirit of the Lord say this. Before my eyes almost opened, I heard him say, the clock is off. The clock for our lives is off. Look at somebody and say, check your clock. Check your clock. The timing is off. Your timing and God's timing. My timing and God's timing. Check your clock. I'm not talking about a biological clock. I'm talking about a destiny clock. Where God has certain things that he has planned to do in our lives at certain times. I need to develop this. Watch this, watch this, I want to develop this. In St. John chapter two, verse four, clock is off, the clock is off. If the clock is slow, you moving slow. If the clock is fast, you're moving too fast. He's saying to us, synchronize your clock with God's clock for your life. Watch Jesus. St. John 2 and 4. Jesus said unto her, woman, what have I to do with you? My hour is not yet come. If you're not careful, Folks will push you ahead and get you out of sequence with God. That's some good stuff there. They will move, they will try to move you 
to a place where it's not time yet. She said, I, they have no wine. She didn't tell them to perform a miracle. She just said they have no wine. And it's, it's, it's not rude for Jesus to call her a woman because that's a cultural thing. We would never call our mothers woman. We know better than that. I wouldn't turn out right. But hear me now. Jesus clock, oh goodness, his destiny clock was in sequence with God. He says, I always do those things that pleases him. He was synchronized, hear me, with the will of God. And he wouldn't allow anybody to push him ahead of where he should have been. Or nobody to slow him down. St. John chapter 7, verse 30. Look at this. Clock. See, he wants us to get our clocks right with him. Now, this is the first day of the year. If we take evaluation, we can see if our clocks, if our clock is in sequence with him, synchronized with him. There's, there's a way for us to see it. St. John chapter 7, verse 30. Look at this. Then they sought to take Jesus, but no man laid hands on him because his hour was not yet come. Wasn't time yet. Wasn't time yet. Look at somebody says, stop beating yourself up. It's not time yet. Time yet, time yet, time yet. Verse 32 says this, look at this. The Pharisees heard the crowd murmuring these things. They were talking about how great Jesus was. They were talking about how wonderful he was. When they heard these things concerning him and the Pharisees and the chief priests sent officers, they sent guards they sent soldiers to what? Take him. To arrest him. To crucify him. You ever wonder why he was crucified when he was crucified? That wasn't an accident. Everything in his life was synchronized. Throw your hands to the Lord. Help me to walk in order footsteps. Now, I, I heard him say that. He, say, he says, your clock is off. The clock is off. They came to take him to be crucified. On one occasion, the Bible says, they came to get him to make him king. Because when he performed those miracles, breaking bread, making bread, the people saw it. And it's like, wow, he needs to be king. And the crowd came to make him king, but the Bible said he stealed away. Shout, it's not time yet. Ooh, that's some good stuff. <laughs> Come on. I'm try He's trying to get our clock right. And only you can determine that with, with your personal time with God. You got to spend personal time with God to understand that. They tried to make him king too soon. And he refused and stealed away. They tried to crucify him too early. And it wasn't time yet. Look what he says when they come to kill him. He says, and Jesus said to them, I shall be with you a little while longer. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good. Just point to somebody and say, you're going to be, you're going to be in that situation a little while longer. <laughs> well, I know we don't want to hear it, but, but, but he, Jesus said, I mean, they sent an army after him. They sent soldiers after him. He said, I'm going to be here a little while longer. <laughs> what is he saying? No man take my life. 
I have the power to lay it down, pick it up. I have the power to do it at the appropriate time. That's why this year we're going to talk about time and work and get where God is in his thinking of time and work. He says, then Jesus said to them, I shall be with you a little while longer. (laughs) Whoa, you don't want to hear that sometimes. Huh? When you're praying and you're asking for deliverance and God says, you're going to be here a little while longer. (laughs) Because we pray right now, Lord. Right now. And Jesus says, I'm going to be here a little while longer. Why is that, Lord? And then I go to him who sent me. It ain't time yet. If you get into the timing and the will of God, the one thing you will recognize and one thing you will see, you can't die before God ordered time if you're walking in his will. Now, we know you can die before your time in disobedience. But if you're in the will of God, you, oh, sha, toba, shama. If you're in the will of God, you have authority to speak to death and say, it's not time yet. Oh, yeah. You, you have the power to speak to cancer and say, it's not time yet. And when you recognize your timing, it doesn't matter what's going on in your body. When you are in obedience to God, you have the power to speak to death and say it's not time yet. Ooh, I, dare you, I dare you, I dare you, I dare you to open your mouth and say, I'm going to be here a little while longer. Oh, no, 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 no. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. I'm going to be here a little while longer. I got children. I got grandchildren. I I, I got a fool out there on the street. I I got a son that's crazy. I got a daughter on drugs. I I will be here. They ain't ready for it. They ain't ready for it. I, I will be here a little while longer. When you understand your time is not God's time, then you can declare, I'm going to be here a little while longer. I'm going to be here until I get this straight. Now, now, let, 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 me, let, me, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Because we say stuff we don't, really th- we, don't, we don't really be thinking. You know, we say it's, it's, it's a blessing to be in the land of the living. It is. But it's more blessing to, to this morning if I'd have woke up in heaven. I got word for it. Paul said to be absent from the body. So what are we saying when we said, Lord, I thank you for being in the land of the living? What we're saying is, I got work to do. I can't leave now. Husbands, you can't leave your wife and family right now. Can you imagine if you took, if you took you out of their lives? Can you imagine, grandmama, if you weren't there? Can you imagine what would happen? That's why you got to, I mean, when you're sick as a dog, you got to do like Hezekiah, roll over. Look at somebody said, roll over. Give him a roll over praise. Roll over, look at the wall and say, there ain't time yet. And God says, I'm going to give you 15 more years. I'm going to give you some, I'm going to give you some more time to get that son off of drugs. I'm going to give you a little more time to get that daughter off of prostitution. I'm going to give you a little more time to get the family together. Shout, it's not time yet. I shall live and not die. I shall declare the works of God. It ain't time yet. Come on, somebody. I said it ain't time yet. Shout, I'm going to be here a little while longer. I got a while longer. I'm going to be here a little while longer. I'm going to be here a little while longer. It ain't time yet. You're going to leave and all your children lost, all your children unsafe, all your children on the way to hell, and you talking about leaving? It ain't. Uh, I, I'm going to try to get you to get that. 
I'm going to try to get us to get that. Come on, shout it. It ain't time yet. <laughs> Somebody's getting healed right now. Somebody's getting healed right now, Brapati. Lay your hand on yourself. Speak to that disease in your body and command it in the name of Jesus to leave out of your body and tell it it ain't time yet. I got work to do. Ho, 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 ho. I, I got family members that need to get right. Listen, I heard a man say, I, I heard a man say, a preacher, Bishop was preaching, Bishop was preaching on, on Friday night. I went to a church and, and he made a declaration. This is what he said. Minister Fletcher, this is what he said. He said, he said, he said, he told the devil, ain't nobody going to hell in this house. He said, told the devil, ain't none of my children going to hell in this house. Ain't nobody going to hell in this house. If you open your mouth and do work, open your mouth, do work. It is doing work when you communicate. Open your mouth and make a declaration. I don't care how bad it is. I don't care what they're going through. I don't care where they are. I don't care if they strung out on drugs. I don't care if they are prostitute on the street. Nobody. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> now that's, that's, that's straight from him now. I see you gotta be in touch with your clock. You gotta be in touch with your clock. You more in touch with your feelings and your pain than you are with your clock. You're going to let your pain tell you what time to get out of here. Shout, it ain't time yet. I'm going to be here a little while. Hey, 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 hey. Now listen to me. If we don't get this word out right here, if we don't do work with our mouth, it's some folks just as good as dead. You hear what I'm telling? I'm telling you, it's some folks just as good as dead. And God begin to say, if, if, if we don't move, this will be their last year. Can I tell the truth? Because what's in their body is going to take them out of here. But if we can get together and do some work, look at somebody and say, can we do some work now? You've been working your mouth all your life the wrong way. But can we do some good work today? Can we start saying what God's saying? It ain't time yet. Whew. Anybody got any unsaved children in here? Anybody got any unsaved children in here? You got to shout. It ain't time yet. You're making, me, you're making me mess up all my notes. Listen, he sent a whole army after Jesus. Shama, the devil done sent, a, he done sent cancer after you. He done sent diseases after you. He done sent AIDS after you. He done sent HIV after you. He done sent diabetes after you. And you just gonna lay there and die? I dare you to open your mouth and shout, it ain't time yet. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Okay. I feel something happening at the altar. Shut up, Osha. I feel something gonna happen at the altar today. If you gave Hezekiah 15 more years, if you gave Hezekiah 15 more years, and he's no respecter person, 
He will add some years to your life right now. But you got to believe it and you got to declare it. Hezekiah told God, I can't praise you in the grave. He said, a living can praise you, but I can't praise you on earth in the grave. God says to Isaiah, go back and tell him. He's got 15 more years. Okay, I see you. All right. All right. Okay. <laughs> Don't you just hate that when you get up for just where you preach God? I mean, before I got out to bed, I rolled out to bed. He talking at five. It's like, oh, this week and two weeks. Now you wait to right here. That's what he does. So what? Hezekiah said to God, said, anybody can move the clock forward. You just live and the clock will continue to go forward, right? Come on with me. He said, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. Come on, musician, tick tock, tick tock. Anybody can do it. If you just stay. The clock is going to keep moving. But Hezekiah said, now, if you can move it backwards. He said, if you can. He said, I understand. Tick, tock, 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 tick, tock. And all of a sudden, it starts saying, talk, tick, 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 Fifteen more years! Fifteen more years! It ain't time yet! <laughs> so it depends on how you're going to praise him anybody can have a tick tock praise just stay around but do you have a talk, tick tock tick tock he's trying to add some years to some of our lives right now let me hit you with two principles real quick I got seven, but he says if your lamb was too, too large or too small, hook up with the people next to you. Shout teamwork. Make the dream work. <laughs> he said get your neighbors and come together with your neighbors. But the one thing that blew me away is when I saw this, the last thing that he said, the, the last part of the outline that I have is what he said. He said, you're going to eat it with your shoes on. You're going to eat it with your staff in your hand. You're going to eat it with your clothes on. You're going to eat it at midnight. Because at midnight, I'm getting ready to move. I'm getting ready to shift you. Can you just look at somebody and say, do you have a sense of urgency? You better get a sense of urgency in 2023. You better start moving. Because God says, I'm going to move and I want to rendezvous with you. Don't be like Adam and Eve. God came to the garden and they weren't there. God's getting ready to meet you in a spot. But you got to be in the spot. You got to be waiting on him in the spot. There is a sense of urgency which says I'm anticipating him doing something. How many came in here 
first Sunday of the year, anticipating God to do something. I don't care what the x-ray says. I don't care what, what they done found. You got to come in with a sense of urgency. Now, some of y'all didn't come with a sense of urgency. I saw it. I peeped out here this morning at Sunday school, and y'all didn't come with a sense of urgency. Huh? You, you, you didn't come this first Sunday of the year. You didn't come with a sense of urgency. You just kind of drug in. You know what you're saying to God when you do that? I'll get there when I get there. They ought to be glad to see me when I get there. Especially when you can get everywhere else on time. We've lost some stuff. And we got to get it back. Because there's stuff happening in other people's bodies. Listen, listen to me. Listen to me. If we don't get where we need to be. And I'm, I'm talking individually. There's a place you need to be for your family. If we don't get where we need to be, we're going to lose some close loved ones this year. Because they don't have the faith that we should have. Your faith can keep people from getting sick. Not only heal them, but keep them from getting sick. That's why he told you to lay your hands on him. You ain't got to lay your hands just when you come to the altar. Laying in the bed with your spouse. Roll over and lay your hands on him. Speak a word. But you can't roll over if it ain't your spouse. You can, but it, it's, you got to disconnect. I'm still preaching. No, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get us somewhere. I'm trying to get us somewhere. He says, do not approach this year like you've approached the last 10 years. And I don't understand what all that means. I'll tell you the truth. Do not approach this year. Go back and look over the last 10 years how you approached the year. Watch, watch this, watch this. Now, I read some things, and I need to make it plain. And I, I, I'll do work on Wednesday. And you need to go home and do work. When was the last time you walked through your house confessing what God said? Do you know what prayer is? Prayer is not praying what you want. Prayer is saying what God says about your need. If you're sick, don't be begging God and crying, I'm sick. No, you walk, you walk through the house talking, by his stripes, I'm healed. It's all right. You walk through the house. You, don't be talking about, I ain't got this, I ain't got that. No, 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 no. Walk through the house and say, it's his will that I prosper, be in health, even as my soul prosper. You speak to the spirit of lack and poverty. Then you do right about your, about, about your finances and get a structure and order to it. Say what God says. Listen, and I'm, I'm going to quit. He gives them dates. He said the 10th of the first month, the 14th of the first month, the 15th through the 21st of the first month. Now, he had them doing stuff for Passover under the law. We don't do that, but it is a pattern since Christ in 1 Corinthians chapter 5 says Christ is our Passover. He commands us to take the Lord's Supper, which is what Israel was doing, Passover. But the pattern is the whole first month. You, you're going to be receiving information the whole first month from your Sunday school teacher. Folks, get up in prayer. People leading praise. Get everything you can get in the first 31 days of January. The whole month. You can't prepare for a whole year in a day. He says this whole month and really the first quarter getting ready. Because if you fall down, get back up. 
back up. Hmm? You know, you said, I ain't going to do this, I ain't going to do that. Then you found yourself around about 2 o'clock in the refrigerator. A.M. Because that sweet potato pie was calling you. <laughs> I'm lost shit now. Listen to me. God's been speaking, and I know why he's speaking, because I'm praying like I've never prayed before. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. I'm praying like I've never prayed before in my life. And y'all know, I'm, you, you, you know, shelling the stuff, or prayer. I, I love prayer, but I'm, I'm praying like I've never prayed before. He's saying some stuff. He says, we cannot afford, God says, we can't afford to lose anybody. I knew exactly what he was saying. We can't afford to lose anybody because they choose not to do the right thing about themselves he's speaking word he's speaking word so the whole month now the consecration starts on tomorrow and we're going after four try to just try not to eat all the way up to 12 o'clock I'm pastoring now see I ain't preaching I'm pastor. eat get you a good meal try to you know Fasting is no good unless you got a scripture that you read. And if you work, keep it on your heart. Get you a scripture. Huh? All right. Because this year is a different year. What didn't kill you in 22, your appetite will kill you in 23. What you ate in 22 that didn't kill you, in 23, if you do the same thing, it's gonna, it will kill you. Stand on your feet, everybody. Stand on your feet. I'm, 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 I ain't going to rush this because I want to I wanna, I wanna, I wanna follow the direction it takes time to do this. Now, as you get ready to come to the altar, to get prayer? Come on, let's be honest. There are some things that followed us into this year already. There are some things that we see, it's, it's just like last year. Slothfulness, laziness, how we're dealing with God and stuff. We, we, it's, we see it first day of the year. I mean, you said what you do on the first day of the year, you're going to be doing all year. That's a lie. We ain't buying that. You got to keep working at it. All right. The one thing that God has really been pressing me about, pressing me, I don't want to say tormenting, but pressing me about, is getting people healed in their bodies. We got people dying that shouldn't be dying. They go on to heaven, they go on to heaven, but we need them down here to work. We, 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 already, we already thin. We, we need them down here to work. On earth. So we can't lose anybody. Now, let me just stop. If, if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, yep. if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, this is your time. It's your hour. We got to cover those that can't cover themselves. They don't realize how serious it is. We have to cover them. Let's cover them. Who's getting killed in Little Rock as we said in records? It ain't the old, it's the young. It's the black males, young males. They, they don't have enough sense to recognize that. So we have to cover them in prayer. If you don't know the Lord today, and you want to know him in the power of the Holy Spirit, I want you to come too. If you want to join Ask Minutes, I want you to come. If you got anything going on in your body, Not only, not only is the word of God a healer, it's, it's preventative med medicine. Come on down, son. Come on down. Help him. If you got anything going on in your body, trying to destroy your body, whew, as a church, we're supposed to come against that thing and attack it. And attack.
break it in the name of Jesus. I want us to speak over some folks today. Some coming for salvation, some come coming for the ministry of Jonah. But whatever is going on, and, and stop putting stuff off. You, you know you should get a checkup. You know you should go. It, it ain't going to get no better. It ain't going to get no better. Stop being afraid of it. Confront it in the name of Jesus. Go on to the doctors. Because even if he shake his head, we know somebody. We know the great physician. Come on, altar workers. Rest altar work. Come on, come on to the altar real quick. I want, I want us, whatever is going on, I'm, there needs to be some healing. He's, this is the 911 area right here. This, this, is, this is an emergency area. This, this, this is a trauma unit right up here. This is for people that are having trauma and stuff. Whew. Devil traumatizing the people of God, traumatizing the saints. The devil is a liar. It's a liar. Come on, everybody in your place. Everybody in place. Everybody in place. Shout is not time yet. I don't care how big they said the tumor is on your brain. If you can get some faith. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. I know that's why you was afraid to go, but don't give up. Shaya. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on. Don't give up. Whew. It's not time yet. I got work to do. I got children lost. Can I, I can't imagine me not being here and all the stuff that's going on. Come on, come on. Come on, you got to see that. He's trying to take you out of the mist. He's trying to take you out. You know why he's trying to take you out? Because you know if he removes you, everything going to fall to pieces. Everything going to fall apart. He's coming after the head. Hey. Come on, come on. And I'm talking to somebody, you don't even think you need prayer. You need prayer. God says, I want to dry that thing up in your body. I want to move that tumor. Yes. Oh, Koba. My, 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 my. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Hallelujah. 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 That's right. That's right. That's right. We receive it in the name of Jesus. 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 God's given out healing and deliverance. We receive it in the name of Jesus. We receive it in the name of Jesus. Come on. You got to I receive my healing in the name of Jesus. You got to walk in that. You got to stay in faith in the name of Jesus. We decrease it right now in the name of Jesus. We weaken the sickness in her body right now. We weaken the sickness in her body right now in the name of Jesus. We weaken it. The doctor's going to reduce the medication when you go back. We weaken that sickness in your body now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, come on. Y'all come in for physical stuff and that's good. But some of y'all need to come up here for emotional stuff. You're going through some emotional trauma right now. And you need to get some deliverance. You need to get some healing for it. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, don't start the year off like that. Tell, tell the devil not, not to shout, not this year. This is how you start off every year. It's a, deep, it's a demonic spirit. It's a familiar spirit. Every year you start off like this. He's a liar. He's a liar, not this year. I'm not starting in the valley this year. Mata, it's it. Hey, 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 hey. I'm healed in Jesus' name. Come on, shout it out. Not this year. No, I'm not starting this year like this. 
this. You ain't tricking me this year. No you ain't giving me an argument and negativity and craziness. Not I this year. You're not turning my emotions upside down. Not I this year. Blame. I'm walking out of that. Oh.